Hi, my name is Antonio Edward, and um, for a couple years now, I've been making DCP packages from uh, for movie makers that want to show their films at film festivals that are hosted in movie theaters. Plus, I host my own film festival, and um, and it's held at a movie theater. It's called SARS, and we uh, do this once a year. So, if you're interested in coming to SARS, um, I invite you to uh, come by and check it out. We're going next year in 2019. We're going to host events in um, Los Angeles and in Austin. It's actually in Kyle, Texas. But and so, if you're interested, just go to SARS.us, and um, we'll tell you more about it. Okay, so uh, now plug about my uh, venture. Let's talk about DCP. So I use Sony Vegas, and it's one of my favorite. Uh, right now, I got 14.0. 15.0 is out right now. Um, it doesn't really matter what version you use, as long as you have image sequencing um, added as one of the rendering um, selections. And so let's wait for this to come up. Okay, on the second screen, if you notice that I don't have my stuff up here, you know, like my video and stuff. I have it all separate on a different screen. So um, I got my audio controls and everything there. It's all on a different screen. Right now you're only looking at one screen. And so what I'm going to do is take a short video clip because I'm going to do this in real time. I'm not going to pause the video or anything like that. I'm going to do everything in real time. So to keep it short, I'm going to take two very short clips, okay? And um, okay, let's keep that short too, okay? So I got you know um, a simple dissolve, but I'm going to show you um, two different ways you can import an entire movie. So if you got um, a high resolution MOV file or MP4 or something, you can import that. You see those um, extra lines right there? I do all my mixing in 5x1 surround sound. And so um, that's my audio preference that I like to use. And so if I drop an entire movie on there with 5x1, notice that Sony Vegas automatically puts in the left and right channel, it mutes the center. It mutes the, um, on the second track, this is a mono track, it mutes the left and right channel and keeps up the, um, uh, the mono track in the center. This is the LFE track. And you can tell this is in surround sound because there's different audio elements all over. Then of course you got the rear. This is the rear channel, left and right. Or the surround, it's not the rear, but it's a surround. And this is the LFE track, the bass channel. But um, we're not going to do a whole movie simply because that would take a very long time to render. For the sake of this video, I'm going to, I'm going to use this very small video clip. Okay, now to add, now here's the thing. When you create a DCP package, you can do one or two things. You can take this surround element, make sure that you do use surround sound. It sounds better. So when you look at your properties, if you got a stereo track audio, make sure that you come into your audio and select 5x1. Uh, go ahead and select a really good sample rate, which is 96,000, 96 kilohertz, okay? And then the bit rate is, you want it to be really good too, so select 24. So 5x1, 96, 24, and best. Make sure that you select the low pass filter quality as being best. Here's another very important thing. Make sure that this is selected. Enable low pass filter on LFE surround projects only. Make sure you select DTS Pro Film. That's important. You want to make sure you select that. Because if you're doing this in a movie theater, you want to make sure that you're taking full advantage of a lot of the subwoofers that are set to uh, fil to filter off, cut off at 120 hertz. Now, if you were rendering for like a DVD, um, like an AC3 file or for a Blu-ray, 
uh, with um, Dolby Digital 5x1, then of course you want to select Dolby Consumer DVD. Very important that you do that, okay? So uh, select the 120. And then for the video, there are, are several different uh, formats you can use. And so I'm going to brew this over here and I'm going to bring in the DCP. To get your resolution that you need, no matter what resolution you shoot it at, you can edit in any resolution you want, just about, you know, like 16 by 9, 29 by 1, which is uh, 235 by 1. So um, you look at the title generator, and this gives you like a little, it's my little cheat sheet on what I could use. This right here, flat, is for 16 by 9. Notice that it's under, or I'm sorry, over 1920 by 1080. So what you're going to notice is you may see some black bars in the top and, and bottom because the width is higher than the height or the width is higher than the standard 16 by 9. So you're, gonna, you're either going to lose about, I don't know, um, 100 minus 20, about 80 or so pixels, or you can gain 80 or so pixels on the top and bottom, 40 and 40 on the top and 40 on the bottom. If you're doing uh, 4K, um, then you want to make sure that you use this resolution, which is equal to this resolution here. If you notice, it's the same ratio. It's 1.85 by 1. Now, if you want to, if you shoot your movie in 2.39 by 1, which is CinemaScope, which a lot of the movies um, that are released today are shot in CinemaScope, then you want to make sure that you use 2048 by 858. You are losing some of the resolution here because you're losing a lot of the resolution on the top and bottom. 4K, you do 4096 by 1716. So what I did was, because uh, Sony Vegas doesn't have this built in into the... Um, into the uh, you know the templates I edit my movies using this of course but when I render to, to DCP you want to change the template so I will change it to like uh, let's do 4k flat no let's do 4k cinemascope that's good right why not Let, let's just play with it let's just have fun with it this is a 10 a 16 by 9 video right here but I'm going to change it to uh, 29 by 1. So we're going to uh, use the same spec that you see here in the drop down. If you notice, I use the same. The reason why I'm doing this is because I'm using an open source DCP compiler called OpenDCP. And so because I'm using this and no other um, DCP compiler, I'm going to stick with what this can do to ensure that I'm compliant with DCI Digital Cinema Initiative compliance. Okay, so I'm going to close this because I already have my preset. Presets are flat 2K, which is standard high definition, 16 by 9, 1998, 1080. So let's say I did select that. My video picture is going to look something like this. I want to match the expect ratio. Notice that my video still maintains with a little bit of black on the top and bottom. Okay. So, and then of course I start to get into that. So I can hit restore and then I can hit match. Notice that my video didn't really change that much. Now this next video clip is um, not a high definition video, it's actually lower. So I'm going to tell it to mount, match, but then I don't want to lose the left and right. I'd rather the audience to see everything. So I'm going to increase it so that there will be black bars on the top and bottom, okay? Now, like I said, we're gonna do this in 4K CinemaScope, so I just want to show you the specs for the 4K flat. 3996 2160, 
make sure that you address your frame rate here. You can do up to 60. Okay, you can literally type in the number 60. Now keep in mind, DCP does not play back with drop frames. It is 976, 970, 940, or even 984 or 985. Don't use those. So if you do shoot your movie in 23976, change it to 24 frames. That's important. You got to change the properties of the project to 24 frames per second. If you don't do this, it's going to be off. Your audio is going to be off and your video is going to be off. Okay. Um, so these are the settings that you see here. Make sure that you always choose Progressive Scan. If you do use um, interlace or drop frame, you will notice ghost image, you know, kind of as the image goes across the screen, there will be some noticeable images. It's one of the things that most people won't notice, but people like you and me, they will notice it. You know, they're like, oh man, look at that. There's a little bit of ghost image there. But most people don't see it uh, for the most part. If you use CinemaScope, you want to use uh, 2048 by 848 or 4K 4096-1716. I have a formula for how I do CinemaScope. Um, I mean, 4K versus 2K. If you have a video, an older video that you shot in 480 or 720, and you want to present, even though the picture quality is not that good, you're going to see some pixelation. Uh, one way to do that is to uh, make it known. Just, just be honest and decrease the video size a little bit so that the picture is inside of a black box. Don't worry about it. Um, because people know that your film is old. If you do want to increase it, um, then do it. But then know that, just let people know, hey, this is a film I made back in 1990. Um, and it was shot on, you know, for, on Super VHS or whatever. But here's my film and enjoy. So um, basically, that's how that works. Oh, you notice I didn't, I didn't really adjust these points here. So I'm going to delete them and grab that one. Let me make sure I do the same to this over here. Okay, now I didn't do that one. Okay, cool. So this one is good. All right, so let me go ahead and close that. I'll move this video back over. But this is my um, my standard. This is my production uh, studio. It's Shiz Media Studios, and I do DCP, DVDs, video production, video editing, audio, and live events. But my little chart here that I have explains how I do that and it's not loaded yet I'm, I'm recording my screen so my computer is going to be a little bit slower than usual there we go so if I have um, 720 or 480 I do I do not go above 2k because it will look worse in 4k okay 4k over here so I can take a video that was shot in 1080p um, 720p 480i and 2k and make a 2k DCP I'll explain that in a second a 2k DCP a 4k DCP is if I shot the movie in either 1080p which unnecessary okay but you are able to get away with a 2k to 4k conversion you can get away with it it will look extremely well and then you got your 4k DCP which you know because your movie was shot in 4k um, I don't recommend 1080 to 4k or anything lower it's not necessary it's, it'll be a waste of time okay so um, let me see let me go ahead and minimize that so I'm gonna break my rule and do a 4k cinema scope okay Remember, I got these preset deals here. If you look at my settings, feel free to grab a screenshot of that. I did nothing to these. These are standard settings. 
audio. Okay, and I'm going to select the different ones here. This is flat 2K, if you want to grab a screenshot of that. Flat 4K. Scope 2K, or scope uh, 2K. Scope 4K. And this is the surround sound settings that I use mostly. And all these others. Now, what I think I like to select is on absolute frames because if I did this, and then I can see down here where my frame rate ends. I only got 443 frames. 443, if you look down here. Okay, so um, I'm going to, of course, only do, click down here, and I'm going to drop that last frame. So now I've only selected 442. So now I know that I have 442 frames. Go to File. And I'm going to save, if I'm rendering a movie file, like I dropped the movie on the timeline, made the adjustments, and did everything I had to, I'm going to save the file onto my desktop. I'm going to get rid of it later, but this file is being saved on my desktop. So in case my computer crashes, I can just open it back up. All my settings will still be there. And I can just, uh, this is my desktop right here. Okay. So I can just double click on it and continue where I left off. And it won't have to, I don't have to set everything back up again. Now, if you're doing a full on movie project and you want to render from the movie project itself, you can do that. It will take a very long time, especially if it's like a 15 minute, 30 minute, an hour and whew, two hour movie. It probably takes several days. OK, give you a heads up, file render, let it sit. It'll probably take a week. And that all depends upon how many different effects you're using. 2K versus 4K. 4K is going to take a lot longer. And um, the higher frames per second. If it's doing 30 frames instead of 24 frames per second, mm -mm, it's going to take a long time. Let's talk about frames per second just for a quick second before we begin rendering. If you shoot your movie in 29.97 frames per second, make sure that you select 30. Do not do 29.970. If you shoot your movie in um, 24 frames a second, salute 24. If you shoot your movie in 23.976, select 24. And um, 60 frames a second, type in 60. Or 48. And whatever else that you use. Uh, for this, I'm going to do standard 24 frames per second. I got my frame selection there. And the first thing I'm going to work on is the audio. I only want to do the audio. Oh, if you want your stereo audio to shine on all the speakers of the theater and it does sound better, you can do one or two things. You can push this audio to the front of the theater and have nothing going on in the back. Or double click, make sure it's in the center, and then you right click, duplicate track, right click again on the second track, and turn that to a LA fee. So this, this will change all your main audio into a LFE channel, which will actually sound better because it adds to the bass. So you got that nice full bass, and then you got the surround sound um, of the stereo audio. It's not true surround, but it is surround sound. Your sound is five by one surround, but it's not that swimming audio, like sound bouncing off the speakers and all that. It won't be doing that, of course. It will just go from left to right, left side of the theater to the right side of the theater. So um, basically it will look like this on your audio mixer. The sound will be in every single track, as you can tell here, even the, the low frequency track.
Now, that's just me talking. My audio sounds better because my bass and my voice will shine greater through the LFE channel, along with the front, the rear, and the center. Okay, so let's um, push that back over there. We're going to work on the audio. This is not going to take very long at all because this is only like a, a few minutes. How long is this movie? 18 seconds. <laughs> okay, not a big deal, right? I'm going to keep it on absolute frame so I can see where my frames are at. Oop, something got adjusted there. Let me go ahead and change that back again. And select only 442. So I'm, I'm losing a frame. Okay, no big deal. One frame. Haha, <laughs> whatever. Save that. Okay. Yep, everything looks good. Everything looks good. Okay, render. Now my render. I also have some presets as well. Okay, and I see where I have to show favorites only. One thing you want to select down here is to render loop region only. And to help out a little bit, stretch video to fill output frame size. Do not letterbox. Don't worry. If you do have forced letterboxing in your aspect uh, adjustments, it won't it won't mess with that. I like to have these both selected to ensure that my video looks full and correct. Let's go back up and let's um, do the wave. And one thing I did was I took this one. This is the preset and I created this. So let's look at my template that I created. So um, I got DCP audio 96 kilohertz. Okay right 96 24 bit rate mono multiple very important make sure you select mono multiple I prefer doing this than doing this you can do this if you want to but I'm not sure how Sony Vegas does that because it only makes it in five by one so I do this one instead And then I saved it. I'll put DCP audio 96 kilohertz. Press OK. And I have that selected. And then I create several folders here. I'm going to do this on my desktop, but make sure you use an external hard drive because it does take up a lot of space. I'm going to create one called Wave. Create another one called uh, TIFF. So I got TIFF and Waves. Create another one called um, JPEG. And create another one called MSF, MXF, Mike X-Ray Foxtrot. There we go. And then I select that. Now, here's the thing about this. Whatever the name of your movie is, make sure you give it a name. So I'm just going to create this and call it Test. Test Movie for YouTube. There we go. All right. That If you create the title of the movie, how you want it labeled, it makes it easier. Um, let me do this real quick. Move this over so you guys can see it got my files here don't worry about this blue cloud my desktop is saved to OneDrive but in fact I should turn off my OneDrive because that will tie up a lot of computer resources so let me turn that off real quick I should have turned this off before I started recording because it will try to upload all those files and that will take up a lot of resources. I'm going to close a lot of things actually. Okay, so I close a lot of background stuff so that my computer can. I mean, I'm already running PowerPoint to record this uh, screen. I use PowerPoint to record the screen. That's already tying up a lot of my resources. Okay, now I'm ready to do it. So, file, render. I got the uh, wave selected. 
there we go and also I have to set the see I got wave selected hit save notice that the name of the movie is right there very easy does it for you automatically and render okay now that is finished rendering my audio had cut off when I was doing that I'm hoping that I'm still recording but I guess I'll continue all right so I got my WAV file created and um, you can see that here notice that it creates a left right center left surround right surround and base what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create the MXX file or MXF file of the uh, WAV file so I'm gonna select that select SMD 24 frames a second make sure you maintain that if you shoot in if you're doing this in 30 make sure you select 30 these are the different options you have here 24 25 30 48 50 60 and 96 I'm gonna do 24 frames per second mono not multi-channel 5 by 1 and I'm going to select the audios to match what it's asking for Like I said, I'm doing this in real time, so I'm not pausing or anything like that or editing this video. I'm doing this video in real time so you can see the entire process. Okay, so I got the um, left. Now just kind of double check it. Left, right, center, sub, LFE, left surround, left surround, right surround, right surround. Perfect. And I'm going to select where I'm going to put the um, MX, MXF file. So I'm going to put test movie YouTube create a short one but then I call it and I this is what I do personally okay this is something that I do I put in capital letters audio just like that you can name this file to wherever you want but to keep everything um, dress right dress you know I'm going to create the same title every single time test movie YouTube save it and create the MXX Okay, now you see how it did that rather quickly. A longer movie will take a longer time. 15 minute movie, an audio MXF file will probably take like a couple minutes. A two hour, three hour movie is going to take a long time. Okay, I'm just going to give you a heads up, render, and walk away. All right, so that's done. Let me show you how that looks. There it is. In VLC player, you can play this file and if you have surround sound connected to your computer you'll be able to hear it so if you want to test it real quick with VLC player you'll be able to hear it really cool okay let me minimize that and minimize this because this is the long part I'm going to render the TIFF files so like I said I already got these preset image sequencing okay let me show you how that looks very simple actually um, I found a template called it DCP TIFF make sure I have best selected use project settings and then this the um, that I, need, I definitely need to set my apologies on that and then I have it selected on sRGB press OK OK and now I'm, I'm going to select my TIFF folder save got that selected and render this shouldn't take too long oh, okay this is taking longer than I oh okay I guess I will be pausing this video okay I'm gonna pause this video for a minute and um, I'll be right back okay as you can tell it's almost done it's at two minutes when I stop the recording it sped up in the render time because it's not trying to record in PowerPoint my screen and doing this at the same time so I'm gonna pause it again so that this can be done rather quickly okay I um okay so I wanted to show you something my I shot this on my cell phone 
my shell phone shoots in 29.997 frames per second. Notice a ghost image here. See that? If you shot your movie in 30 frames per second or 24 frames per second with integral numbers, then you will not have to see those ghost images. Okay, so I just want to show you that real quick. It's almost done. Um, so let me see. I'm going to pause it again and wait for it to get near the ending. Okay, so it's almost done. So let me go ahead and let it finish. And voila. Okay, it's done. Um, if you shot your movie in 2 by 2.35 by 1, this will fill up. And I think, um, let's see, what did I do wrong on that? I mashed the, oh, okay. Well, okay, we'll, we'll skip it for now. But if you want it to lose the top and bottom of the of your picture, and you and you because you put a tape across the top and bottom of your of your video, just make sure that you restore and then you match. Okay, right click restore, right click match, and that will fill up the screen. For the sake of this video, I'm, I will be continuing from here. But uh, I did kind of mess that up there, but no big deal. This is only a demonstration. Okay, so um, now I created the video. Now I'm done with my TIFF files. Okay, I hope I'm still recording or at least recording my audio because it does keep going back and forth. So I don't know if I'll be trashing this video or what. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the desktop and go to my TIFF files. And as you can tell, it records every single frame as a separate picture file. That's what makes DCP so awesome because you're looking at each individual frame like a film. It's almost like a film. And you notice here, 442 frames. Great. Now I'm going to come back to the desktop because I don't want the computer to continue to render these individual thumbnails. I want it to stop. So I'm going to come off of that. Look at my audio files, my MXX. All right, now I'm ready to do the JPEG conversion. So I'm gonna select 4K, 24 frames a second. And I will take it, if you have a lot of movement in your movie, a lot of changing graphics or a lot of, just a lot of movement, um, then you wanna render at the highest quality possible. But if you have a little bit less, you can probably get away like a very static shots, not a whole lot going on. You can probably get away with 200. If you have a little bit of both going on, then I would say 230. Um, I'm not worried about this video and I'm going to get done with this. So I'm going to put it at 200. Okay. This matches the amount of um, cores you have in your microprocessor. Source color, sRGB. Nerex pixel. Make sure you select that. This is important. Standard settings. Okay, don't change these. sRGB, Nerex pixel, uh, open JPEG, which is the only selection up here. Cinemascope uh, 4K, or not Cinemascope 4K. It's just Cinema 4K. And, um, 24 frames a second. There we go. Now I'm ready to select my TIFF file, my TIFF files, and you select the folder. You may have to do this one through four four two, and then go to your directory and select where you want the uh, JPEG to go. You got to convert it to JPEG now. And there you go. And look what happens. This is going to take some time because, let me see, it hasn't started yet. So let's see what happens. It's going rather slow because I'm recording the screen at the time. So let's, this. I'm going to pause it again and bring it back up when it gets near, near the end. 
uh, and just real quick, uh, notice how it's generating the JPEG files. It's JTC files. It's actually JPEG 2000. It's not their standard JPEG. That's why I didn't render in Vegas in JPEG because Vegas renders it in JPEG, GP, JPG. I'm doing J2C. Okay. So um, just wanted to show you that real quick. I'm going to pause it again. Okay, so I'm, I'm pausing it again. Um, notice that it's taking a long time. I started the recording again, and it's even slower, but I just want to show you that a 18 second clip. If your computer has higher specs than mine, I mean, I have a very simple setup just to let you guys know. Um, and very simple setup. So let's take a look at that real quick. If your computer is more high speed than mine, then by all means, it's going to be a little bit faster, but it still takes a long time. Okay. Um, let's go over to the about page. I hope my audio is being recording, being recorded while I was doing this, but notice that my specs, I got an i7, 2.5 gigahertz. It's not the fastest thing in the world. Eight gigs of RAM. It's a laptop, basically. 64 bit operating system. Okay, great. So. Let's go ahead and close that and I'll pause the recording. Halfway through. Okay, so it's almost done. It's only got a few four, few more frames left. And keep in mind how OpenDCP works. It uses each thread of your microprocessor to convert one file at a time. You know, so it it's really good um, and it's rather fast I'm, I'm sure it'd be a lot faster on a faster machine with a graphics card and a bunch of other things in play it's now complete great now I want to show you the JPEG files they're not standard JPEGs they are they're JPEGs yes but it's not your standard JPEG um, notice that notice that the um, your TIFF files are for 18 second video is 1.3 gigabytes. Your JPEG files for 18 second movie is 440 megabits, megabytes. Pretty high or pretty low as compared to this. It still uses compression, but the compression ratio, if you look at the Wikipedia article, JPEG 2000, it um, uses a much superior compression rate as the standard JPEG. It was made by the same people who created JPEG in the first place, the Joint Photographic Experts Group. And they created JPEG 2000 to be a better format for pixel and resolution accuracy, for lossiness and lossiness compression, error, resilience, uh, and a bunch of other things here. So if you want to learn more about more about JPEG, uh, definitely take a look at this article, Wikipedia article. OK. All right. Let me close this. Let me minimize that. All right. So now we're going to convert the JPEG to MXF. Now, keep in mind that it doesn't really convert anything. What it will do is it will take all those individual frames and make it into one file. That's all it does. So we're going to choose JPEG, SMPTE, 24 frames a second. We're going to select the JPEG folder. And that's where it's going to convert from. And we're also going to select the MXX file. So what I do is to keep the naming convention the same. I select it. Call it video. Save it. Now it's the same video file and create the MSX and this yep this shouldn't take long at all all right done for 18 second movie it didn't take long at all so now I'm ready to create the DCP this is the final step so you go to title generator and I'm going to call this test YouTube there's only so many that's it that's all I could type okay so you want to keep it short if the name of your movie was like the abyss you know, Avatar, 
you know, um, um, don't drink in the hood. Okay, I can't fit all that, right? So don't drink in the hood without your gin and juice. You can do something like that if you want. But in this case, I'm going to call it Test YouTube. Okay. Um, let's do a uh, short. You can see you got feature, trailer, teaser, promo, test. I want to do short subject. I'm going to do two dimensional, 24 frames a second. It's going to be 2.39 by 1. English. No subtitles. United States. Um, general admission because I don't think I cursed in this one now of course um, you know there are others here that you can select um, if your movie is uh, not rated by the motion picture alliance then just select what you feel is best so I'm going to choose general admission audio type 5 by one narrative in English resolution 4k studio these are pre-selected studios you can't change these so you have it selected on nothing you could put the name of your production company here if you want to that will be embedded into the XML file that I'm going to show you in a minute and that's it these settings is what the projector reads and the projectionist will look at this and tell what to punch into the programming of the theater server okay what I usually do and you don't have to do this but what I like to do is create a new folder copy this information here and name the folder this okay that's my folder right there I'll put it right here and press OK and then you can put the name of your production company here. Rate it again. Short subject. And then I select the MXF file. So I select the video, the audio. Now, one thing is, if this did have a higher or lower number, you choose the lower number on both sides. It won't render. So let's say this said like, if it was like this, after you selected the files, this is 442, this is 441, make sure that you drop this down to 441 as well. Okay? 442, 442. And then I create the DCP file. I go and select the DCP folder. And then select it. DCP is created. Now, it did it really quick because it's only an 18 second movie. A longer movie will take a long time. Now, let's look at the DCP files. When you ingest this into a DCP server, it looks like this. You notice that all your data is here. This is a, a random generated number. All the information is right here. The name of your file, the name of your video file, and the audio file here, how big it is, all that is automatically calculated for you. This is the file size, okay? All that is right there. You look at some of these others, the same thing. Okay? And then these are your audio and video files. Now you create it your DCP. It's done. You can play this video back with VLC player. Now keep in mind, it won't play both of these back in VLC player. You will need a DCP player. And so what I get is Neo DCP player. You can it, it costs like about I think like a hundred dollars a year. You have to rent it, you can't buy it. Okay. And, um, okay, there was an update available, but I'm not going to do that now. 
And so basically you open the file. I gotta go to my desktop. Oops. Okay. Go back. Desktop. This uses the old version of OS mapping. And it's in my remember my OneDrive has been rerouted to there we go. Okay. And notice it picks up the asset map, which is this file here. I double click on it. open and it gives you now if your computer is not high speed enough to play 4k video you can reduce it but you this is um, a way to test your DV, your DCP if your computer is high speed enough to play back in 4k it's not going to play back that well My processor is not fast enough to render, so I'm taking it to 1K. And that's it. All right, let me close that. Okay, so that's Neo DCP player. Do a search on it and rent it. Now, Open DCP, you can get it at um, opendcp.org. Sony Vegas is rather cheap, you know, when you compare. And you can also do monthly payments on it. So you pay a certain amount per month and you can own, well, rent or lease Vegas. Now, this is a purchase copy. Before I decided doing this, the first people to start leasing video editing system was Adobe Premiere. Then Avid followed um, them and then Sony Vegas. Sony saw that subscription-based software is probably the best and um, they're now doing it as well um, you can lease it for let me see I'm trying to remember which one of these does it is it the Vegas Pro Suite um, I thought that you could do it okay I'm not seeing it right away you know what I'm gonna do in the in the description below I'm going to put links to all these different things, Open DCP, Neo DCP Player, Vegas, and all that good stuff, okay? So um, you can see for yourself, click on the links, try it out, see how you like it. This video that I rendered for DCP, I'm going to render that same video for, for um, playback on YouTube. So for no reason at all. And so you'll be able to see that video that I rendered for DCP. Okay, so the DCP is done. Now, when you ship it out to your, you know, you have like a little thumb drive, you take this whole entire folder and you dump it into your, into your folder, okay? And um, this will allow you to um, transport your DCP package from your home to the theater server. You can also take this video folder and put it into your hard drive if you have uh, a DCP hard drive. And so this file right here is what's going to be ingested into the theater. And whenever you have a film festival and you know it's you know they require DCP and you create your DCP, it's always a good idea to test it out on the actual theater platform. And most of the time, the theaters will allow you to test their systems because they want you to be able to have awesome playback and a good experience with them because that will get them to, you know, they know that you are going to be the one that's going to be using that, that uh, setup. So they're going to want to make sure that your video plays back and usually you have to show up in the mornings before the theater opens. And I've done this several times. I've met with the projectionist. I had three or four hours of DCPs to be played and test every single video, all short movies. And it was a pleasure because then I got to then I asked the projectionist, can I see one of my movies all the way through? And I sat in the theater by myself watching my film on the big screen. It's such a joy to see that. Um, now, if you're not renting a theater to host an event like I do or a film festival, but you want to see your home movies, you can do that. You can rent a theater just find out how much it costs is, is not cheap.
it's, it's, it's you know it would probably be like a thousand dollars or something like that but if you got a short film and you want to show it to your family and you want to have this big hoorah <laughs> of your vacation video or wedding video or whatever the case go ahead and create that dcp rent that theater and get that few moments of joy that you get when seeing your movies on the big screen or even your films your uh, student films or independent films you know it's it's a joy is nothing like seeing your film on the big screen there's nothing like it it looks just like a film that was produced by a major movie studio if you use the right equipment um, I shoot most of my films in black magic so if you shoot your film in black magic or red or, or you know one of those high expensive canons or you know Panasonic great if you shoot it on an iPhone or Android phone with a good camera it will still look good on a big screen I've seen many different formats of films on DCP and whether shot on an iPhone or Android like I did on my phone and I don't have a you know a Galaxy you know X or anything like that you know um, it's a uh, cheaper than that it's, it's a it's a hundred dollar phone but yet is a good joy to see your stuff on the big screen it's really really good and if you put a lot of hard work into your movies treat yourself to seeing your film on the big screen all right well that's all i gotta say and uh yeah um, my name is antonio edward if you ever want to use my services um just go to shizmediastudios.com i already showed you how i do it you can do this yourself however some people don't have the time you know so um, if you don't have the time just go to shizmediastudios.com and select dcp from the top menu and talk to me and i'll be happy to work on your movies as you can see i did several already and i still got to include a few more but i haven't had time to update this page lately i got like 10 more movies to add to this list of movies that i've already done all right you guys have a good one if you're interested in attending my film festival event i have one in kyle texas which is 10 miles south of austin texas and also it's going to be one in los angeles on may 14th so that's may 4th in austin may 14th just go to sars.us the link is in the description below you guys have a good day and thanks for watching i know this was a long video but i tried to do it in real time but hey you know you do what you have to do all right, take it easy. Bye-bye.